Hey everyone, hope you're all going well, and welcome to a gameplay of Roblox Pokemon Brick Bronze. Now, this is a game that, well, is one of the first games that ever got me into, into Pokemon in the first place. I have fond memories of this game back before um, it got taken off uh, Roblox's website after Nintendo. This game is probably one of my favorite games I've ever played on the Roblox platform. I thought the story was really well thought out. I've enjoyed like just playing the game in general. And yeah, I was hoping I'd do a walkthrough on this eventually. Now, I know it's been nearly two months since I said I was actually gonna upload something. Well, it's actually been more than two months realistically, but we're finally here. So without further ado, we're gonna get into the game. Now, a quick disclaimer, I have already played the, um, first eh, I've already played the game on a main account so we're doing this all over again on a new account I'm hoping for this to be more of a walkthrough where I basically teach you maybe some things that you didn't know before show you some new things that you haven't seen before and yeah the main thing is it's just gonna be a completionist run once we get past the eighth gym though that is when the content becomes pretty new for me so any of this new any of the new stuff such as I heard they have added in the Elite Four into the game, that's going to be a completely blind experience for me. But up until that point, I'm just going to be giving you it as a walkthrough, essentially. So, without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Are we ready to start our adventure? Yes we are. God, I have to say how well the music was done. Like the guy that the guy that made the music for the original game did such a good job. Okay, post editing me here. So when I went back through the footage, I realized that I didn't actually record the in-game audio. So if you hear me talking about a lot of the music within the game, just know that you're not going to be able to hear it for this video, but I hope to have it fixed for next video. In the meantime, enjoy some music that I've just chucked in the background. Thank you, and hope you enjoy the rest of the video. It really captures that's what I like about Pokemon music. It's got that sort of adventure excitement like young kid sort of energy to it yep character looking awesome as always oh wait i'm not gonna bother reading half of this i'll basically be going through all the npcs as well that you can talk to and only like keeping in the ones that are probably that important so it won't be a real it won't be a super highly edited video but you know don't want to make it like eight hours long the typical pokemon trainer story what should we name ourselves on this account how about just duh? oh did you no <laughs> let's get that right there we go Thanks for playing small notes. Only be able to trade and battle after you receive the first gym badge. Progress is not saved automatically, must manually save or enable to auto save. Still in development, there will be bugs. Join the Discord. And yes, I'll put the Discord in the description for anyone that's interested in playing this game for themselves because it's a very. The people that have been working on this version of the game are awesome. For those of you who don't know, this game has been taken down and re uploaded several times. How this game works is that they essentially update the game on their own accord there's a group of developers and admins that work on this game and they just consistently add new stuff to the game continuing on from where the game left off when it was deleted back in 2017 jesus that was a long time ago but yeah i've been playing this game for a while now they've been like there's been a couple updates that they've taken a while to get around to which is why i'm a little bit behind but it's all right because we're here now the typical companion slash rival. And we'll go, yeah, we'll go talk to our parents. So yeah, this music takes me back. It's really a flashback in time to the good old days. But yeah, here we are with the secret cave, which we'll find out more about later. Hopefully, I don't even think they ever did at any point, but. Right, 
Alright, so something in the cave just discovered. Mm -hmm, very thorough for the work, enough talking, let's head down and let's get our first Pokemon. That's the one. Now before we do go on, I should probably take this moment to just quickly, you know, let's just quickly appreciate the character. Let's get a nice background. This goes hard. Anyway, so let's head on in and let's just get, take a look around. So of course, got to get our first Pokemon. Pokemon are our friends, we grow alongside them, blah blah blah, basically he's gonna love us. Hmm. Now, out of the choices, obviously I could go basic or Gen 1. Not really a Gen 2 fan myself. Gen 3 has got some awesome starters. Gen 4, Gen 5, Gen 6, Gen 7, and Gen 8 is out. Is Gen 9 out? Gen 9 is out. Okay, well, personally I don't know much about the later Gens, but I really like... Chespin is my favourite starter. It has been my favourite starter. I think it was the first Super one I picked when I started this game. So, for old time's sake, we're going to do just that. Pokedex, that's splendid. Oh boy. Jake has no clue what he's in for. I'm not gonna lie, I think Chespin was probably not the best pick for the start of the game, considering that the second gym's gonna completely fuck us up, but hopefully it will be fine. I just can't afford to lose to Jake, that would be quite embarrassing. So that's our first battle down. So, nice little 200 cash XP. Thank you for the heals, Jake. Oh, my parents are of course are so excited by me because I'm amazing. secret item that is the most important part of the story the bronze broke all right catch up with you later Jake okay Chishma town so I think that's where we're going to try and get to by the end of this video. So the plan is that we're going to try and get to get through at least one gym every episode. I'm thinking for this first episode it will just be a matter of getting to the first gym. So we'll be spending most of this episode just doing that, I think. So without further, further ado, let's get straight into it. Some wild Pokemon hearts have... True... Now I did say I was going to talk to everybody, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. More than 700 buddy, you need to keep up. It's a little what bit more than that. One thing I know I'm going to absolutely hate is how slow my character runs. We're going to have to get through quite a bit of the game before we get past that point in the game. Makes sense. Yep, talking about Stab, which I didn't know about until really recently, so... I think I'm going to go back on what I said before. I think I'm only going to keep in uh, NPCs that give important dialogue. I'm going to chat to all of them as I play the game, but unless I have notable dialogue that um, people might want to know for their walkthroughs, I'm not going to bother keeping it in. 
go to the keep on Jake. Oh, these are Jake's parents, as you can tell. Not the brightest kid. That's fine. I think I'll go back and check my house too, just in case my parents are there. What do they have to say? Room for you, champ. Don't forget to floss. Okay, splendid. Thanks, mom. Mom, clock. I don't think there's anything here. Cool little look at the map, which we'll see gets updated later on. Or well, not updated, but we'll see where we go. So we're roughly, if we look at the map, we're roughly here. And we're going to be going all the way up and around, essentially, with a little bit of a detour. This guy's important. So I come back to him for some healing later on. Oh, I wonder who these guys are. I wonder what they're going to do in the story. Our first encounter before we even get music. What? <coughs> No, I'm not going to bother fighting everything. Oh, I might need the levels, actually. I'm not going to bother capturing everything, is what I should be saying. Because I'm not here to complete the Pokédex. I can maybe do that in another video. But for the moment, all I want to do is just... And do what I normally do, and just... Kill everything. If I see something of interest, I'll consider capturing it. Our first trainer battle. Fighting a Wormpole. Again, Bug's probably not the best thing to start a fight against, but it is what it is. Having my speed low is not really the most useful thing on the planet to have, especially when I'm outspeed by a Bug. That was a nice shot. Some nice damage. And boom, first trainer down, I'm going to go back and heal now. There's going to be a lot of back and forth, as you can probably tell in this game. This walkthrough is going to be fun, but I'm going to fight everybody. Now, this tree looks like it can be cut down. We're going to be coming back to this a bit later. But when I um, get certain items, I will be coming back to places like this and collecting stuff and showing you secrets that you might not have known about. Although I assume most of the people watching probably know everything about this, but going forward a Pidgey or something might be useful to have on our team. So I might consider damaging it a little, seeing if I can maybe put it on my team. For a start, I think I might use a Vine Whip. Oh, not very effective, but still one shots or kills. Splendid. Now, what did I see? I swear I saw an item that said... I thought I said it had five Master Balls or something. That would have been crazy. Huh? These Pokemon that can just slow down and prolong the battle just are really annoying. We carry on. Rollout's quite a useful move in the, in the sense that it always gives you more damage every time you reuse it. So, just waiting a couple turns, it will eventually get strong enough to two shot. Oh, I think it already can two shot, yeah. And it's going to be very useful against a Pidgey, considering that it can also be super effective. There we go. We'll need that move to be very strong for the upcoming gym. When we start to fight against fire gyms. Because our Pokemon are not going to be kitted out for that. Our first secret, a potion. I'm going to avoid using potions for most of the playthrough, but <coughs> they come in handy. Now before we go on, I want to also point out these things here. These are mint bushes. Now, every once in a while there is a chance that, we, that there will be a mint inside these bushes, and these mints are used to change Pokemon abilities. Now I'm assuming most people here know, how, know the general gist of Pokemon on like catching them. But most people don't know too much about the stats and how that works. So each nature, you see this nature here, Naive, increases one stat and lowers another stat. Almost every nature does this. There's a couple that are neutral and don't do anything to the stats. But for the most part, your nature will change one of these 
five stats and reduce another one. With Naive, how it works is that speed's increased in exchange for special defense. And I can't look at my IVs right now, but basically, later on in the game, these are going to be important stats to keep in mind. Now for Chespin, Chespin as a Pokemon is not typically a fast Pokemon, so this nature is kind of not good for it. The best one would probably be like a bulkier one, like an attack or defense stat, and reducing special attack. So maybe if we get a mint later on that um, benefits us in that sense, that would be a good thing to have. But we've got physical moves, and because its physical attack is stronger than its special attack, we're going to be doing more damage with physical moves than special moves. So yeah, when we see these mint bushes, we need to collect whatever's in them and use them later on. And here's the first big plot point of the story. Jake coming back to tell me, and having Professor Cypress tell me, that my parents are gone. My parents were just too smart for them, and they needed them for their plans. Interesting. I don't know why I would... Why would they give me the necklace, I wonder? So anyway, that's great, my um, parents have been abducted, who knows what's happened to them. All will be revealed later on in the story. But that gives us our first important thing to do, and that is to go to Cheshma Town right through these doors. While I'm here, that's actually another thing I should quickly mention. With the way that these st uh, stats work, there is a specific trait to them called Ivies. Now, Ivies are broken up into sets of 31, or up to 31, I should say. Basically, each stat has the chance of being a random value in between 0 and 31. What this means is that if you're on the, if you have a Pokemon with 31 on a specific stat, that's the highest you can boost at that stat. So, for example, if my attack stat was, if I had a 31 Ivy in attack that would increase these stats here. These stats are not the IVs, by the way. These are just the overall stats of the Pokemon once it's being leveled up. But if it had 31 IVs in attack, I would assume that number would be higher because the odds are that this is not 30, a 31 IV attacker. You normally check it here by clicking this button, but of course, we can't check it right now. For the nature I have, you combine the nature with good IVs, that helps your Pokemon out a lot. But another thing you can do is a thing called EV training. Now EVs are effort values. IVs are independent values and are randomly assigned to the Pokemon. Whereas effort values can essentially be added on by battling certain Pokemon. The gist of it is, to simplify it, fighting certain Pokemon will give you certain, uh, certain stat boosts. So if you want to make your Pokemon super strong, you have a limited number of EVs to work with. So in theory, you want to boost them in the stat that that Pokemon is strong in. Like I was saying before, Chespin is more of a bulky tank than it is a fast or special attacker. So my EVs, I would want to boost my EVs in attack and defense, which would mean I'd have to fight attack um, Pokemon that give attack and defense EVs. Now unfortunately for this playthrough, we're not going to be doing that because of the fact that the story will mean that we have to kill a lot of random things here and there. But later on in the story, once I show you my competitive teams that I have on my main account, you can see that we'll be doing a lot of battling with hard, with hardened EV trained Pokemon. You'll see the difference it makes between having a Pokemon with our EVs and one fully trained and properly in EVs. Anyway, let's continue. Over here, she says. 
first time traveling alone, yes. Parents are adopted. Yeah, I know, it's absolutely terrible. And guys, this is just a red flag all around. If someone invites you back to their home and they're like 20 years older than you, with and they say discuss it privately, don't follow them in, obviously. I mean, unless, I mean, it, it depends. If they're a 10, Yes, she gave me this necklace. Oh, screw you. Alright, well. It's our first encounter. Yep, she took my necklace. Thanks, Jake. So I'm going to meet up with Jake in a second, but first of all I want to show you guys the secret just around the back here. So if you go over here you can find yourself another Pokeball. So that will be useful for catching Pokemon again. If you don't have the money to buy one, buy one which you should. But if you don't, it saves you the time and hassle. Now for everyone wondering why we have to do these parts of the story, they have construction conveniently placed on each point of the map that we need to go. Yes, very inconvenient of you to just start building on the bridge until I've completed part of the story to go along. So like I said before, most NPCs aren't actually going to be kept in the video. I'm only going to keep the ones that have plot relevance or give hints to certain events that you can take participate in. So it's about coffee. So, when you go into here, first of all, you get this nice little, this like nice little thing to you know, have a fun time to. That was a fail and a half. And it's named after, yes, this Pokemon here. So, this Pokemon is essentially a deer that's, uh, that changes its form based on which seasons it's in. So, you can see we've got winter, autumn, spring, and I assume it's summer. Coffee every morning. So, there's a reason for this. Talk to this lady here. On a sports spot, having a three samples of our famous sauce but coffee now this is one of the first items that we have that could be useful for battles and i'll explain why if we go to our medicine or our item sorry sauce but coffee is an item that can be held by a pokemon has the chance of boosting a pokemon's speed each turn essentially giving us the chance to get the hits getting it getting a hit off for the opponent so we'll put that on chestpin for the moment and we'll see that in action later on. And this is a feature that was relatively new when I when I was playing, so here we go. Let's do a battle against this guy and see what happens. I actually don't know how difficult this will be. Oh well we're fighting a combi, so it can't be too bad. A little under leveled, but we've got roll out. So as long as we're just Little careful will be fine. And of course it uses a move to stop us from evading. Doesn't matter though. So with that out of the way. And that's 105 XP. That's a lot of XP for us at the moment. And it's a good trainer battle. 2600 cash. We'll be doing this every day for a while because of the fact that it's quite useful. A strawberry sleep. Now I don't actually know what this does. So we'll find out. We go to our medicine. Now Milser is another type of Pokemon. I'm assuming it might be an evolution item used later on in the game, but I don't know. And as this guy says, this building over here is gonna be the Pokemon Center. Several things you can find inside. A nurse that heals your Pokemon, seconds a PC where we can just store and search Pokemon. Not gonna worry us for the moment because we don't need it. But the third place is the Mart, where we can buy useful items, which will be where we buy our Pokeballs from. Hmm. So we're going to quickly rest our Pokemon whilst listening to this awesome music. Let's check out what's going on. So we have the option of currently we can't buy many things, only Pokeballs, Potions, Antidotes, and Paralyzed Heals. 
which won't be useful for us right now. But this is the first indicator of what's to come up. Paralyzed heals being used to stop a Pokemon obviously from being paralyzed. What can paralyze people? Electric types in Pokemon at least. So we should be ready for that. The other thing is sprays for poisoning and obviously you can assume that would be a poison type Pokemon or in this case bugs because bugs generally give off poisonous effects. Now you can also sell stuff here. Now we don't have anything really to sell at the moment of any value but later on in the game we'll see that we can find quite a few items. Here's our first PC. We have a plethora of boxes to choose from. When I say a plethora I thought we'd have way more but this is where you have to join a group for some of these features. Later on in the game we'll see there's a couple other features that we um, get from joining this group and I'll show you these when we get around to it. But now that we're done here we can leave and we can go into the forest to continue the story. So as Jake says, she's in here so I'm just going to wait around and look for stuff. Now first of all we've got a mint bush here, we've got some little patches of grass not going to fight this guy for the moment just so I can show you some of the stuff. There's nothing around this corner I believe of any value. Just that. You can see the little girl over there. We'll get to her in a sec. First of all let's get this Pokeball. This Pokeball gives us an antidote. <coughs> That's our third secret. So now let's just battle this guy just because I want to get some XP. Now obviously you don't have to battle every Pokemon trainer, you can walk behind them like I did before. But if you, for the sake of this run through we're going to do a completionist route. Not the Pokedex yet, just because I can't be asked, but in terms of interaction with the game. Now rollout's a useful move because it means I don't have to do anything at all. These videos will also be useful for new players if they want to if they want to fight a trainer and be better prepared for what the trainer has to throw at them knowing what the trainer might have can also be a very useful thing and you'll see later on in the game that being prepared for that sort of stuff always comes in handy at the moment it won't matter too much luckily the two pokemon he chose metapod and um kakuna both don't really have any fighting moves as you can see metapod uses the move hard and one of its only moves to boost its defense but that doesn't matter because it's not fighting us so it's gonna lose anyway there we go not gonna miss with that also should have noted that Rollout has a chance to miss now bites gonna be a useful move to have I'm personally not a big fan of status moves in um, the story mode so I'm not gonna bother keeping growl for lowering attack I'd much rather use Bite. With a chance to flinch, it will stop the opponent from fighting back against us whilst also doing good damage. And it just means we have more range of Pokemon types to fight, because Dark now counters a lot of other Pokemon types. Now, I can't remember if the stats are particularly different between Nidoran male and female. I thought I thought, I thought for the most part it might just be looks, but Nidoran male might have a little bit more strength. And there's the flinch coming in handy already. And this is why the antidote was given to us earlier on. So we are going to use that. I, typ I typically don't use items early on. I mean, I have the option of just running back to the Pokemon Center, but for the sake of gameplay, I'm going to try and keep going along. Here is our first important item that is not just a random like um, antidote or whatever. This is a TM. So these yellow Pokeballs have TMs inside them. A TM is essentially an, a disc that you can use in your um, bag to teach your Pokemon a new move. So if we look here, see this one's called Grass Knot. Now we're not going to put this one on, but it's a special move, it's a grass type move, and it does more damage. It doesn't do, it doesn't do zero damage like it says here. The accuracy is 100%, but it's a special type move that when the opponent is heavier, it does more damage which is great but for chessman it's not going to work because as i said before chessman's best stat typically is its attack and defense 
its special attack is not that good, so giving it a special attacking move is not worth it. I need her own female, I don't know if the stats change, but either way it's about to get destroyed. <coughs> and it flinches. Now we can see the effects of poison kicking in. I probably should have healed beforehand, but I didn't. So I'll make sure to use the antidote at the end of this turn. There we go, use that antidote and heal Chespin. And now we're ready to fight the lady that stole my brick. Pause! Looks like you caught up to I don't know why you ran this way. Oh, well, I guess that's a fair point actually. Team Eclipse. Oh yes, you're a member of that very evil group that I saw on the bridge earlier on. I'm a frustrate. No, no way you can, I can beat you. Well, this is about to be super embarrassing for her that she's going to lose to me. Shows you just how um, competent Team Eclipse is when they have these sort of Pokemon on their team. This is our first Dark type to fight against. Now, I know the moves relatively well, so I know the type advantages. And I know for a fact that Dark types cannot do not much damage to Dark types with the same type move, I mean. So I'm not going to bother using that approach. Later on in the story, I might do a video explaining the different Pokemon types and how they work against each other. And just like that, we've beaten our first Team Eclipse member. Was it Linda, I think? Thanks for the necklace. Always get what we want. And there we go. Jake's here just to say good job. True, Jake. So we need some more Pokemon. Eight gym leaders, and we can just challenge them. Then we can learn more information on what happened to my parents. So, our priority is to get to the next gym. So we're going to heal up here, and then we're going to get straight into it. I'm now curious if maybe the reason that the IVs and EV stats don't show up on the Pokemon is because of the fact that we haven't joined the group yet on this account. And that's a big thing. Join the Discord on the group for like better rewards if you want to keep your progress going and you want to know what the status of the game is and get better rewards. But yes, if we look to our right over here, we'll see another secret, which is what we call a nugget. Now, nuggets have no purpose whatsoever in the game except to be money. So they're just monetary value. If I were to go back to the mart right now, I could sell it, but I'm not going to bother right now. Now, Route 2, but we can't get here yet, which is a little bit annoying. The fact that you can only go here with a certain move, which we won't get until really late on in the game. So that's a little annoying, but whatever. We'll come back to that later. So this girl wants to challenge the um, gym leader of Aurora or some sort of thing. She wants to be a champion. Fortunately, she only has a ski, so I feel a little bit bad for her. But it is what it is. And of course, Skitty has an ability, which means that my Pokemon sometimes infatuated and won't fight. But she did flinch, so that's a good thing. Now, Chespin, please attack. Thank you. Sing, that's not good. So now I'm going to have to wait a couple of turns for my Pokemon to wake up. So it's not that useful. And this is the first effect of Saws Bucks um, raising our speed. So if I were to look at my Pokemon stats right now, the speed's 15 with the level, but with the boost in speed, that's probably been multiplied by about 1.5, which is always useful. Once we wait for um, Chespin to wake up, Chespin's always going to be fast in this Pokemon at the moment because of its speed, which is going to be very useful later on in the game when we're trying to fight fast Pokemon with the speed boost. Chespin wakes up. Is Chespin going to fight? It's going to fight. And I almost forgot. I can't 
can't believe I almost forgot I should be renaming my Pokemon. Now, I don't know if I can rename them on the spot, so I'm going to quickly go back and I'm going to rename them. I typically don't rename my Pokemon or give any of my Pokemon names when I'm playing the game, but for the sake of this playthrough, I think it's important that we give our Pokemon a, a really cool name. Not a cool name, just a name. We are going to give this guy a nickname, and I've been playing a lot of uh, Lethal Company recently, so I'm going to call him Forest Giant, named after the big monsters. I think it makes sense once you see what he will turn into later on in the story. So I think I'm going to end it here for this episode. There's not really much we need to do past this. We've already made a decent chunk of progress. We've gotten into the start of the story, defeated our first Eclipse member, found all the secrets along the way well, that we can achieve. And the next episode will be focused on us going through this door over here and fighting the first gym leader. But until then, thank you very, very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. These walkthroughs are something that I've been planning on doing for a long, long time, and I'm glad that I'm getting around to it because I love this game. I'm hoping to get through the story as quickly as possible on this account so that I can move on to my main account to play the story. I'm really looking forward to playing PvP. PvP is one of those things that I love doing and I'd love to show people what it's like so that I can encourage people to get into it. If you want more of this sort of stuff, consider liking the video, consider subscribing. I'm going to do it anyway but your support would be greatly appreciated. It also gives me that motivation to actually upload, you know? But again, thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll catch you all around.